All right, welcome once again to this uh, uh, meeting. Thank you. Uh, it's good to see a lot of uh, known faces here and also some on re relatively uh, unknown. First of all, I'm Stephen Enada. Um, uh, I work with International Committee on Nigeria advice, uh, advocating uh, within DC policy space and Europe. Um, we try as much as possible to engage on this uh, Nigeria dynamics. We have uh, one of our major, major contributor, Dr. Shayo Ajiboye, who actually is the president <coughs> of Mission Africa International. So we are not going to waste, uh, he will speak about what Mission Africa International does. I'd like to tell you that International Committee on Nigeria in the last two weeks uh, have mobilized uh, uh, some Nigerians together in Abuja on citizen engagement and uh, multi-faith uh, dialogue. So we're able to uh, inaugurate in collaboration with uh, RF Rantibu, Greg Mitchell was in Nigeria, and uh, we started uh, Nigeria Rantibu. So at least uh, we are the first who actually has taken uh, the ministerial out of the United States, at least to Nigeria. So we've started uh, RF Roundtable in Nigeria. So we thank God for that opportunity. And that's just to tell you that we have some great, huge concern to make sure uh, we are able to effect uh, some kind of positive change in Nigeria where human lives uh, will be respected, will not be violated. So, uh, and also, uh, we, under admonition and uh, leadership of uh, Congressman Frank Wolf. We have advanced even this call for special envoy to Nigeria and Lecture region, which uh, uh, saved the persecuted Christian actually uh, 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 is playing a prominent role there. And we thank God for Frank and Didi and uh, Faith and uh, ICC also for uh, putting effort together to make sure this happens. And also, Dr. Lindsay, thank you, you and your wife. Uh, you've been a huge support and pillar to this. So on this note, I would like to bring uh, Dr. Shari Ajiboye as he coordinates. And then I know we are not going to be having more than seven minutes of presentation. And you know, uh, uh, Faith McDonnell will be also speaking on why special envoy is important. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. It's a privilege to stand in this place and it's worth repeating that Frank, Dede, you, you have done the miraculous. Um, <laughs> you know, to put something like this together, it's, it looks easy unless you know what goes on behind the, 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 the backstage. And Dede has just been <laughs> an agent of God in these regards. So thank you once again. And we thank all our friends who are here. And we are grateful that you are here. Um, Mission Africa International. Before I go on, uh, uh, Frank, uh, I mean, um, as a Frank, um, Stephen, Stephen Enada, the Executive Director of ICON, who is becoming the Dean of Ad Advocacy for Nigerian Issues in Washington, D.C. Please, can you help me give a clap to Stephen? You know, we honor you, and you know that that's not a light statement. You, you, you work tirelessly to make these things happen. And we are grateful so, to, you, for, to God for you. Thank you, sir. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go on and on because um, I, so many people I would like to talk about. Uh, Pastor uh, Frank Fagbami who is the leader of, one of the leaders of African Faith-Based Leadership Council, um, who came to spend time with us. Um, um, 
Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Fumifalano. I mean, Obilano, I'm sorry. What am I doing? <laughs> Pastor Fumi Obilano, who is also here from Philadelphia, traveled all the way from Philadelphia, who will be speaking in a few minutes. Um, I would like to go straight to why we are here. And we are here because of, uh, for me, the children of Nigeria and the widows and the orphans. Mission Africa International in the U.S. is an advocacy operation. In Nigeria, we live among those who people talk about. I have children that are now mine whose parents have been shot before their very eyes. I have children that are now mine whose parents were not just shot, but their mother was raped right before them. I've been in villages that have been pulled down. Um, I'm talking about somebody goes into a home and pull down the pillars so that you cannot rebuild it. I've been in areas where not only would the Islamists kill the people and drive them out, they will bring bulldozer to remove the foundation of the churches so that in one season you will not be able to locate that there was a church there. Um, it's difficult to explain some of this and just because we say persecution, what does that mean? Until you until you touch the children. I built schools for children that the government refused to educate. We build hospitals for people that their people refuse to take care of. I'm sorry. For us, it's, it's real life. It's not theory. I'm sorry. We don't do it for just Christian children. We do it for Fulani children too. We love them. Right now we're building a school in a Fulani village. And we are grateful that we can do that. That's so little that we can do. I'm not going to take a lot of your time, but you know, when we talk about the special envoy team, it's not a theory. I don't have any reason to be fighting for this. I'm safe in America. My children are safe here. My wife is here. I have a good job. Why am I troubling myself? Why am I doing what I'm doing? It's because Jesus said, if you do it for the least of this, you've done it for me. There's a need for a special envoy. It's a critical need because of the complicity of those that ought to be speaking for the people that are being persecuted. So when the person that is supposed to save me is the person that is killing me, what can I do? My life is hopeless. I, if you're a Christian child in some of the states of Nigeria, and I can mention names, once your name is Joshua, you are not allowed to come to primary school. Mm -hmm. If your name is Joshua, if your name is John, 
that's that that's enough. You can't you can't be registered in school. We have a situation. We are once you're a Christian, it doesn't matter how brilliant you are. If you even get employed, we, we talk about economic persecution, we talk about educational persecution, we talk about terror as an agency for persecution. And we talk about those different facets of persecution. You know, I mean, can you imagine growing up not being able to dream you, because you know that your dream is going nowhere? <laughs> I have a friend who is a Fulani girl. We've been friend for nearly, friends for nearly 30 years. She calls her children my sons. She says, Shai, you're your sons. <laughs> And uh, I call her mother, my mother. So they are Fulani Christians, for those who don't know. She, their village was attacked by terrorists. And please don't, please don't use the term hearts men for um, pastoralist conflict. If there is a conflict, that means two of us are fighting, right? Don't use that term again. It's, it's totally incorrect. <laughs> the terrorists came into their village. His grandfather's village is a son name. Is the name of the village. <laughs> they came, chased everybody out. And after some time, things quieted down. And the people were going to move back. And the, the government facilitated the Muslims to move back. And the Christians said, OK, we too want to move back. And they said, your village does not have gates. You know the meaning of that? Uh -huh. We do not recognize that you exist. So double jeopardy. I don't want to take a lot of your time. This next week, I'm going back to Nigeria. And I'm going to again be among my beloved people. I'm going to travel right across the places that people talk about. So pray for us for protection. Um, but we believe God wants us to do it. Um, without much ado, I would like to do you want to coordinate this or should I go on? Please come on, come on, help me. I'm, you, I'm a mess right now. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, because of our time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, please come. want Pastor Fumi Obilano to come first. She's a senior pastor of uh, Redeemed Christian Church of God Living um, Springs in Philadelphia. She's um, an amazing woman, a lawyer by profession, a very senior lawyer who chose to become a pastor <laughs> and has been pastoring since 1998 and is the head of the one church she started has become 40 churches, you know, and she's the mother of them all. <laughs> she's working not just in the United States of America, but globally in East Africa, in the Caribbean. Pastor Fum is passionate about women issues and, and other issues, you know. But, you know, a lot of this terrorism thing is a woman issue, you know. Is it because the man can get up and go? Where's the woman going to leave her children?